All right, so I'm going to do it like um, like it's one of those like late night um, horror shows, and Mike's not into it. Um, you know, so so it's sort of like um, you know he's he's kind of telling this like cautionary tale, and um, and and so he's just kind of like telling it really rote and you know <laughs> sort of thing. So like. All right, so. Uh, <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Tales from Beyond. Tonight we have a ghoulish tale of moral ambiguity and crossing the line about one Walter White. A man whose soul is more black than gray. That's really stupid. I'm not going to read from these cue cards anymore. Anyway, I knew Walter White for a little while. He killed me. I'm dead. Anyway, I feel like he... Did a few things right in his last days. Uh, for instance, got this thing going on with his ex-partners from Grey Matter, threatening them, telling them that they hired the best hitman west of the Mississippi. I don't know why he picked the Mississippi River. Plenty of good guys to... Take care of a cleaning job west of the Columbia River, but anyway, them's the breaks. And what he did was he confused them by pointing laser pointers at them. It's very clever. I think they pretty much have shit for brains if they're going to be convinced by that, but you know how these rich people are. Anywho, this MEM60 rig that he put together was not bad. I think that it's a shame that he wrecked the exterior and interior of this fine automobile that he got a hold of. But all the same, he took out of several Nazis, which is good in pretty much anybody's book, if you ask me. No, I didn't really care for Walter. He was kind of an asshole, to be really frank with you. But in the end... He crossed his T's, he dotted his I's, and he left this earth a lot bloodier, but slightly better than he had made it when he was alive, which is a little bit more than you can say for most people. I don't know exactly why that's supposed to be a cautionary tale, but there it is, the tale of Walter White, the school teacher who got cancer, Started making drugs. Lost the trust of his family. All of his friends. And died. On the floor. Of a warehouse. With Badfinger playing in the background. This has been Tales from Beyond. I'm Mike Ermintrout. And I'm dead. Good night. I noticed the credits have stopped rolling, but you haven't gone away. You got a reason that you're still here? You want to hear these assholes prattle on? It's over. Go home. Go to bed. It's late. God, you like my granddaughter. She doesn't listen to me. Go watch porn, whatever. <laughs> if you if you want to stick around, we're going to need a longer show. Because that's all the show we got for tonight. All right. Look, I got things to do. So if you're going to stick around, you're just going to have to deal with it. All right. Chapter one. How to bake a pie. Step one. 
crack eggs into a mixing bowl. Step two, add two cups of flour. I'm just going to keep reading this. I'm not telling you any more scary stories. All right. Add three tablespoons Crisco. Oh, now where's my Crisco? God damn it. Gus! You take my Crisco! All right. Look. Um, I can't fuck around anymore, all right? I got this book club meeting that I'm going to. We're going to have, you know, Tom Clancy's going to be there. Might even get an appearance from J.D. Salinger. <laughs> no, he's not dead. Shit. Okay, hold on. Um, all right, look, I got to go. I got this book club meeting that I'm going to. Tom Clancy's going to be there. There might even be an appearance from Kurt Vonnegut, maybe Ayn Rand. If Ayn Rand's there, I can tell you for sure that Gail Boddicker's going to be there. Guy's a nutcase for that chick. Head over heels for that ugly-ass broad. I don't even get it. I write about some dude who's got a hard on for trains. I mean, nobody gives a fuck. <laughs> but somehow, she does it. It's a work of art. Now, if the stars are not aligned, we might get an appearance from L. Ron Hubbard. That fucking asshole. I don't even know how he got in here. Guy's the biggest shady crook I've ever heard of. <laughs> okay, let me try that again. Um, <laughs> of course, if the stars are not aligned at the book group, we might get an appearance from Captain Ron, a.k.a. L. Ron Hubbard. Guy just talks about how great he is. Doesn't even tell us about his books. Piloting this boat of underage boys, steering into here. But on the plus side... We might get an appearance from, shit, I can't remember his name. He did that Shaft song. Uh, Isaac Hayes. That's right. Thanks, Gus. I love that guy. All he does is talk about all the women he's fucked. It's awesome. He's like, yeah, baby, I'm going to make love to you. Oh, yeah. And then there's that Michael Crichton guy. He's on and on about global warming. And all I want to talk to him about is why Congo was in, was such an underappreciated story. But he didn't have time for that. Even in heaven, you figure somebody might get the stick out of their ass, but no. So one night, we were at a book group. Captain Ron's blabbing on as usual. And suddenly... Gus starts talking about this book that he read about these four sisters. All of a sudden, the memories, they start flashing back. And I realize I've read this book a long time ago before I was a cop. 
And uh, see, the thing is, down on earth, I can be a bit of a hard ass. But up in heaven, it's a little harder to disguise all the emotion. And uh, so we started talking about how Beth got sick. And I've got that scarlet fever and now she was just such a trooper and was the best character in the novel, but she died and that's just how life is. It's just one shitty thing after another happened to the poor people who don't deserve it. like me. Occasionally we can get a glimpse of things going on down on Earth up here. Usually it's pretty depressing shit, so I don't go in for it. But I heard it was involving my favorite non-Jewish Jewish lawyer over in Omaha. Apparently there was a holdup at a local Cinnabon. And uh, so I guess uh, our, our friend, the ex-lawyer, supposed to be managing this place, supposed to be taking responsibility, but instead he's peeping in the showers behind where the employees go. So he comes back after he's beat off a couple of times. And there's a holdup going on. He's walked straight into the middle of a shitstorm. Still got jism dribbling from the end of his prick. And he loses spell control. Right in the middle of the Cinnabon. So you got the smell of fear. Jism. Shit. And cinnamon and sugar in the air. <laughs> but he held it together well enough and bullshitted his way through it until the police got there. You know, being dead isn't all that bad. I can use astral projection to go anywhere. I once managed to get inside of Patrick Wilson. You may have seen it happen. It's called Insidious Chapter 2. That wasn't him acting. That was me controlling him. I had a lot of shit I had to work through. And I just figured, hey, Patrick Wilson's a good-looking guy. He's got a lot of good breaks. I might as well go ahead and... Take him down a peg. I've seen a lot of stuff when I've been astral projecting. One time I projected myself inside of a jelly donut that was being consumed by a large African-American male. You may know him. His name is Huel, former associate of mine. So I took a little journey down Huel's gullet into his internal organs and just kind of sloshed around in some hydrochloric acid for a couple of hours and eventually made my way through his intestinal passage and out his rectum. Let me tell you, the sewer system in pretty much any average city it's quite a fascinating journey. I mean, it's a hell of a place. I'm glad I didn't have any sensory perception going in there, but it was a it was neat to experience. And eventually, I made my way out to the Pacific Ocean. Or was it the Gulf of Mexico? 
Uh, I suppose it doesn't matter. It was water. So anyway, uh, you've been keeping me here for a while. I've been rambling, and frankly, I just don't give a fuck. That's Mike Herman Trout in a nutshell. Now, you go on, you live your lives, and you stay away from the blue meth. You'll do fine. And remember, no more half measures. Especially if you're making a pie. Your pie's gonna turn into shit if you use half measures. You gotta go to the full measures. Now get out of here.